The United States has been living really since World War II in what can be called the age of American privilege. Now, in America, we hear a lot of nonsense about white privilege, male privilege, but the real privilege is the privilege of being an American. And the question I want to ask is, is that privilege now coming to an end? I, I fear that it is. I'm not saying America's finished, but what I am saying is this idea that America is something special in the world, this idea that the American passport is better than everybody else's passport, uh, this idea that America sets the standard, that's, that's what the Biden administration is forfeiting. And I'm not clear, I'm not sure we can ever get that back. Now, what do we mean by American privilege? I remember many years ago, I was in the late 1990s, uh, this was, I was on a cruise in the Middle East, uh, a cruise that went to countries like Jordan, Riyadh, uh, Saudi Arabia. And when we got to Saudi Arabia, uh, the, um, the people who disembarked the ship, and these were probably half Americans, but there were people from other countries, we all had to, I mean, the women had to wear essentially abayas, full length black outfits with their faces largely covered. And, um, and the Europeans were like, yeah, you know, when in Rome, do like the Romans. And so there was sort of a um, no problem with doing it. But the Americans, I noticed, balked at it. And I remember one woman saying kind of indignantly, I'm not going to do that. I'm an American. Uh, and, and while I was sort of chuckling at that sentiment, I also understood that this is what this is American privilege. American privilege means that we as Americans are not held to the same standard as anyone else. Uh, if we become hostages abroad, our country will come get us in a way that other countries may be like so. Um, and But as you can see with Biden now, that is being called into question. Now, here's another example um, just from now. I see a very interesting exchange on Twitter between the U.S. Navy um, and a Chinese a communist newspaper called Global Times. So the U.S. Navy is talking about U.S. Uh, Navy exercises in the South China Sea. And the Navy goes, the freedom of all nations to navigate in international waters is important and especially vital in the South China Sea when nearly a third of global maritime trade transits every year. So here's the U.S. Navy doing its usual pompous proclamation. We have every right to patrol the South China Sea. Now here's what the China Times replies. Hopefully, when Chinese warships can pass through the Caribbean Sea or show up near Hawaii and Guam one day, the U.S. will uphold the same standard of freedom of navigation. That day will come soon. So the Chinese are basically saying it's, it's all very well to make these pompous proclamations. We have every right to be in your waters. Well, does China ever have every right to be in our waters? So suddenly you notice that the rest of the world isn't going along with these blithe assertions of American superiority as if there's one set of rules that applies to America, another set of rules that applies to everybody else. That day seems to be coming to an end. And here's an interesting article by the historian Andrew Bakovich in the Washington Post the age of American privilege is over. Now, uh, Bakovich points out that going back to 1948, George Kennan, the U.S. State Department diplomat, very prominent figure and well-known writer as well, uh, made the observation that uh, the United States has 6% of the world's population, but 50% of the world's wealth. Now, that's dominance. Uh, and with that comes privilege, the privilege of being, you can say, lord of the manor. And so not only did Americans have a way of life that's the envy of the world, but America could project its influence around the world, not just through military power, but also through example. People wanted to become more like Americans and follow American culture, watch American movies, develop a kind of American sensibility. Now, by 2000, Bakovich points out, the United States accounts for 33% of the world's wealth, so down from 50 uh, and that number has plummeted uh, even further. Uh, and now with this defeat in Afghanistan, Bakovich says, and I, I largely agree with him, quote, the age of American privilege is gone for good. He goes, essentially, George Kennan was, at the end of the day, a realist. George, George Kennan was, this is a realistic assessment of where we are in the world, and we can build uh, our own, not only our self-understanding, but our actions in the world based on it. But this is not 1948. This is 2021. And uh, Andrew Bakovich says, a realistic assessment is that America no longer carries that kind of clout. And so it's time for a kind of 
more modest American role in the world. We don't detach from the world. This is not isolationism. But America recognizes that we have serious problems at home, uh, serious problems that, be that begin with a deep political divide, a breakdown of trust in basic institutions, a level of corruption once considered in inconceivable in America, a denial of basic uh, liberties in many cases, a, a lack of faith even in equal justice, all these fundamental principles that once seemed to define the American way of life no longer do, no longer do. And what this means is that we're not that much better than other people. When we look at Cuban political prisoners, we got to ask, are we doing something like that over here? We look at censorship abroad, Xi Jinping, we've got to ask, well, wait a minute, how different really is Jack Dorsey or Mark Zuckerberg from Xi Jinping? They're operating in a different context, but isn't it the same tyrannical mindset? The What this means is that we can no longer say with confidence, at least now, uh, we are the land of the free and the home of the brave, not only will other people chuckle, fight back, push back, not believe it, but in, at certain times and in certain moments, we ourselves don't believe it either.